Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I hope y'all are having a great day. I hope you're ready to see this video. I hope you're ready to enjoy some farmhouse. Um, today's video is gonna be something a little different. Uh, today, what I'm actually doing. So a couple weeks ago, I did a three part series where everything came together in the end as like this huge tablescape and it was just gorgeous and I ended up keeping pretty much most of it. So it's time to redo my kitchen. I have been doing the Pioneer Woman for a couple months now, and I'm just kind of over it. Um, I decided, I, I realized that my hand, this hand is not on the, in the camera. I should scoot over it just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so anyways, let me finish what I was saying. All right, so I've been doing the Pioneer Lady for, or Woman, Pioneer Woman, not Lady. I don't know where that came from. The Pioneer Woman for a couple months now, I'm just kind of over it. I want to go all farmhouse, so that's what we're going to be doing, but I'm going to separate it into three separate episodes where one, we're going to be focusing on like the kitchen sink, one, we're going to be focusing on like a coffee bar, and then the other, we're going to be focusing on kind of my dining room area. All right, so as I said, the kitchen sink, ladies and gentlemen, the kitchen sink, we're at all the time, or I am anyways. I am always at that kitchen sink. It seems like dishes just appear. I don't know where they come from. I'll get everything done up, and then all of a sudden, I got a sink full again. I don't know where they come from. They just magically end up in the sink or around the house, and I have to go pick them up. That's what happens a lot of times. <laughs> anyways, I want it to be cute. If I'm going to have to stand there and look at the dad blame thing, it might as well look cute, right? I mean, come on. So, that's what we're going to be working on today. The kitchen sink, around the kitchen sink area. All right. So, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. I love the comments. They are so exciting. I love getting the comments. They're encouraging. They're just, I love them. Thank y'all so much for that. And don't worry. I did understand that y'all do want to see the boho and that will be coming out very soon. Um, if you are not subscribed, please do so. That would be awesome. And let's get right into the video. Okay, so for this first DIY here, we're going to be taking these canvases that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've also got some Jenga blocks. I've got my X-Acto knife, a little pair of like needle nose plier type things, some uh, black paint from the Dollar General Store, and also some twine. We are going to be making a little mini ladder. You heard me right, a ladder. It is so stinking cute. Oh my gosh, you're going to love it. I have my hand towels on it, and it is so darling in the kitchen. It really is. It, it really is cute. All right, so I just take the canvas off of these um, frames. All we want is the frame. And I had a little bit of trouble getting the canvas off. I actually had more trouble getting the staples out. That was the, the hard part. The canvases I just was able to, to rip off, but now the staples most of them did not want to come out. So I actually end up just deciding to heck with it. I'm going to make it the back of it and leave the staples in it. It will be okay. Nobody's going to see the back. So anyways, I uh, take these frames once I got the canvas off and I'm going to take that black paint. I added some water. Y'all seen me do this before. I'm addicted totally to this black stain. I love it. Oh, I love it. All right. So I've got a baby wipe. And I'm just going to wipe it straight on and wipe it back off. That's that's the plan here. I get it all over this this uh, frame all, in every nook and cranny, the whole darn thing. I get it all. All right. I also did six popsicle sticks, the jumbo popsicle sticks, um, and I also have my staple gun and hot glue gun. So once I got those stained the way I wanted them. Now, I'm showing you here that the back of it has got the staples. So, I'm just going to hot glue it together first. We are going to take the staple gun and do, do it a little more secure with the staple gun. But first, I hot glued everything together. Just a little bead of hot glue. You don't really want it like oozing through to the front. And I am terrible about using too much hot glue. So I did pretty good on this one. I'm proud of myself. All right. So I took those jumbo popsicle sticks and just measured them off to the frame. I, what we're doing is making extra, um, I'm sure there's a word for it, but like slats. 
I, I don't know. I think that's what, I don't know. Whatever. Extra steps on the ladder. There you go. Um, so, I wanted at least five on there, and it only had it only had two the way it was made. So, that's why I added the extra popsicle sticks. So, as I'm adding these popsicle sticks here in just a second, you're going to realize that I have made a huge boo-boo. I, so, I just take those popsicle sticks, measure them off just like I did, take my pencil, go right back over every one of them, and cut them off. I cut them with my scissors um, that because they'll cut just, just easy as pie with them scissors. All right, so I'm hot gluing these on, and I realize, oh my gosh, I have actually glued these together with the wrong side facing up. Are you joking me? <laughs> oh my gosh. No way. Oh my gosh. Yeah, totally did. So I had one with the staples facing the wrong direction. So I had to take it apart and we're going to start over. But hey, it's crafting. It's just par for the core for me. I took my scissors, pried it apart. Probably not the safest thing to do, but whatever. I just went with it, okay? I just pried it apart, peeled the hot glue off, and started back over. Things happen. It's just part of it. Things happen in life, for heaven's sakes, and it's just part of it. So, you know, there's, there's always a way to fix it. And the bright side to this is... I needed to take one of those uh, slats out anyways in order to make our bottom to the ladder. Obviously, a ladder's got two legs, not one whole piece. So, it's okay. There's, all, there's always a silver lining, right? So, I just took that piece out, hot glued these back together. Now, as far as the popsicle sticks, they are glued one on each side but facing each other. So that they would make extra steps on this on this ladder. And of course, Blue's got to stick his nose in everything. <laughs> there he is. All right. So I'm just going to take my staple gun and staple these in a couple different spots. Now, I'm stapling the, the frames together. I didn't actually staple the um, popsicle sticks because we're going to take some twine and kind of... It's more for looks, but it also will hold those popsicle sticks in place too. All right, so now I'm going to take my twine. Oh, no, I'm going to work on the legs first. I put those legs on, as you see, they are slanted. One's a little longer than the actual frame, and then one's a little shorter than the frame. That way, it would stand up slanted. I wanted it to kind of tilt backwards when I, when I put, stand it up in my kitchen. Okay, so I'm just going to take my twine and wrap it around. As you see there, I don't really know how to explain this in words, I wrapped it around the leg and the side of the uh, ladder. I want it to look like it's tied on there, like the, the, the step to the ladder is tied on when I actually it's just all for looks, but I wanted it to look that way anyway. So I'm just wrapping it around both sides and the, la the step itself. If any of that just made sense, I have no idea if that just made sense or not. Hopefully, you can tell by watching what I'm doing. Tied a good knot in it and snipped off my end. Okay, so for the next one, I do it a little different. Instead of having to go like side to side, I just added a little bit of hot glue and started in the middle and wrap, 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 wrapped. And then I went to the side and wrap, 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 wrapped. You'll see here in just a second. So I just start wrapping around in the middle. Then I started wrapping around on the sides. And for some reason, that's in slow motion. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. All right. So I do every step this way. You can do both sides like that. That's how simple this was. That's all I did to this. And it is so stinking cute. Holds my hand towels perfectly. Looks a lot taller in this than it actually is, but so stinking cute. It's perfect for right next to my sink. I love it. Alrighty, so for this next one, I've got some stencils and a canvas from the Dollar Tree. Now, the stencils were my peepaws, so they are, they're special to me. Um, I've got some black paint and my, my homemade chalk paint there. 
All right, so I'm just going to start out by painting this canvas with this this chalk paint. Now, this is the the um, actual real homemade chalk paint. The first one I did, I used the wrong baby powder. I think I told y'all that in one of my DIYs. Um, I used the cornstarch baby powder, and you're actually supposed to use the baby powder that has talc in it. So I actually, I had to order some online to find it. So it is awesome. I will probably from now on make my own uh, chalk paint because this stuff goes on so creamy and you can make it just as thick or just as thin as you want it. It doesn't matter. I just used some other white paint that I had, nothing in, nothing special, added that baby powder to it. And I'm telling you, it is so smooth and creamy. I just, I love it. And I love Waverly paint, but this right here is pretty dadgum close if I say so myself. So just remember, you got to have talc. Johnson & Johnson baby powder make, still makes baby powder with talc in it. You can order it on Amazon. And I will try my best to leave a link, but y'all, I'm not real good at that. I don't, I don't really know just exactly how to leave links. So, or I would leave a link to my dad blame uh, Instagram for heaven's sakes. And I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so I'm going to take my black paint that I got from the Dollar General store, and I'm going to actually paint the stencils. Like I said, these are my pig paws, and so they are, they're special to me. Um, I found them out in his shed after he had passed away, and so I brought them home, and I thought, okay, I'm, I don't want to tear these up, or I really don't want to just use them like regular, so what am I going to do with these? And then when I thought of this picture, I thought, oh, Okay, I can use PayPal's stencils, and then that way I've got something special, and it's taken care of. It's pretty. It's it's being taken care of nicely. So, I just painted the stencil. What we're going to do is use the inside of the stencil. These are the big, older stencils that used to come like on a... It's almost like a piece of cardstock. It's real thick paper. So, I just painted them. Now, I took them out, and they're in two pieces, all of every one of these letters is in two pieces. So I just popped it out of the stencil itself. And then I just took a little bit of scotch tape and taped them together. Just a very little bit, just enough to hold it together until I could get it Mod Podged. And don't y'all love my um, tape dispenser? I'll just add that while I'm, while I'm talking. Yes, it is a flamingo. It's so cute, ain't it? I got that at the Dollar General store. Yes, I did. So cute. Okay, so... I just peeled that piece of tape in half and used half of it. That's how much tape I used. Very, very little tape. I didn't want it bulky or anything like that or be able to be seen. I just wanted just enough to hold this dude together until I could get the Mod Podge out. So I do every one of them that way. Now my canvas is dry. My letters are dry. They're taped. They're ready to go. I'm going to take some painter's tape and just eyeball a straight line across here. And this is just there to help me keep my letters in a straight line because I'm not real good at that. I get all all wonky trying to do it, just eyeballing it. I I, I say it's because I got astigmatism, but I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. <laughs> We're just going to say that. So anyways, I get my letters on there like I want them, and then I'm going to add my Mod Podge. I end up taking them back off and adding Mod Podge to the entire canvas would have been so much easier to do in the beginning, but I was trying to eye my, my letters and make sure I had them on there right. And I actually started out with the B and the Y. That they would line up correctly, you know, have the same spacing on each end. So I just added a crap ton of Mod Podge to this. Like I said, those letters are made out of that thicker paper, and I, I wanted them to stick really good. So I just added a lot of um, Mod Podge and then added my letters down. Of course, I place them and then have to peel them up and replace them because OCD, they had to be just right. See, I got to, I got to, just that, what is that, like a, not even a half an inch off or something, and I've got to, I just can't stand it though, y'all. I'm, I don't know why I'm like that. I just, it has to be just right. All right, so then I'm going to go back over the top of them with my Mod Podge. And y'all, this is pretty much all I did to this, and it is my favorite piece out of all of this. Maybe because of the stencils itself, but I love this piece. I think it turned out fantastic, and it was super simple to do. Very, very simple.
You could do it with any stencils, too. Or you could just actually stencil your, your letters on, you know, like the right way, for heaven's sakes. You don't have to use the pieces out of the stencil. I just did because of, you know, special reasons. But that's how easy this was. Now, I did distress it just a little bit. I lost the footage to that, but look at that. So, so cute. To distress it, I just used a little bit of brown paint on the corners and then a very little bit of white paint across the actual letters. And that's all I did. I love this. Very special. All right, moving on. So this next one is going to be a hanging uh, planter. I got that little picture deal there for a dollar at the Dollar General store. Um, the two signs are from the Dollar Tree. I could not get the sticker off, so I wanted to show you all this little trick. I learned this from uh, Crafts by Caitlin. I saw, uh, she mentioned this and showed it on her channel one time, and I was like, oh my gosh, does that really work? So, it really works. I'm going to show you all firsthand that this really does work. <laughs> Take your blow dryer, stick it to the sticker, run that hot air on it real good. Be sure you got your, your heat on high. About 10, 15 seconds, something like that. And looky there. That dude will peel right off. Is that not the darndest thing? I love that. That's so cool. Okay, so doesn't take much to amuse me, obviously. But anyways, I just took these signs, flipped them upside down. Or, well, actually, the the front part is going to be facing you. And you're we're going to glue them together. And then I'm going to be sticking um, popsicle sticks to it to hold it together, just to secure it. Making sure I did not glue it to the table. I'm, I'm known for doing that. All right, so I just run me another bead of hot glue down that seam, just in case. And then I'm just going to add hot glue to my popsicle sticks and pop them right down. And this is just kind of like extra security that it's going to stay together. I don't want my flyers falling off, for heaven's sakes. Three popsicle sticks. All right, once I'm done, I'm just going to flip it over. Peel off any extra hot glue that might have seeped through. And then taking my homemade chalk paint. And I'm just going to paint this entire sign. Y'all have to try this paint. I'm telling you. You will not be disappointed. So simple to do. And I think the baby powder is like 384 or 389 something like that on uh, Amazon. Just type in Johnson & Johnson baby powder read the description on it, make sure it's got the talc in it, and that's what you want. So simple. It's a small little thing of the baby powder that you get. You get the small one, but still for three eighty eight dollars or whatever, how much ever it is, it's totally worth it because you can do a whole thing of, that's like 16 ounces of paint, and I used little less than a whole thing of um, baby powder, and you don't have to make it as thick as I did. It works so good, though. All right, so once I got that painted and it completely dry, I'm going to take my little sign that I got from the Dollar General store, take the, the um, hanging part off of it, and we're going to hot glue this directly to that, that sign. And I'd used way too much hot glue. I always do, but whatever. That's just me. I'm a little excessive. Anyways, whatever. So I just add my hot glue to the back of that sign, and then I'm just going to pop it right down on there. Ain't that pretty? I love that sign. That I couldn't believe it was only a dollar. Dollar General Store has always got good stuff. All right, so I'm going to take this basket that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's not heavy. It's a very light little basket. And I'm going to just staple it directly to the board. Now, I did take my um, little, you saw there, my little lavender plant and put it in there just to make sure that it wasn't too tall to where it would cover the picture. I just wanted it, I wanted it down under it where you could put your flowers in and still see the picture, the flower market picture. So I just stapled it. My stapler was acting a little funny every time I would staple it would put out like three extra staples for some reason i don't know something was wonky about it but anyways i did get it stapled to the board so once i got it stapled on i'm just going to take my flowers and pop them in there and those flowers came from the 
do- two of them came from the Dollar General store. The other two came from the Dollar Tree. All right, so once I got that ready, I take this buffalo check ribbon that I got from Amazon, and I am just going to twist one end. I cut me off some, and I'm just going to twist one end, and then I'm just going to weed it through there. And I'm just going to tie a little bow, just a regular old shoestring bow. Now, I know how to tie bows, y'all. I don't want you to think all she can do is that shoestring bow. But, I mean, farmhouse is simple, okay? So, that's why you typically see just the little shoestring bow out of me. So, I'm just going to uh, dovetail those ends. And that's all, that's all there is to this. It's so cute. And it's a good size piece. It's a good piece. And there you go. So cute. Now I did take my uh, fingernail file and distress the board a little bit. But other than that, that's all I did to it. So cute. All right, so for this next one, I'm excited about this one. I can't wait for y'all to see this. This turns out so good, oh my gosh. All right, so these two candlesticks came from the Dollar Tree. That first pen you saw came from a uh, thrift store, and so did this colander. All right, so I've got my Loctite super or hot glue, and then I've also got my hot glue. I have my chalk paint and also um, Waverly's Antique Wax. So I'm just going to take the white chalk paint first and paint those um, candle holders. Now, I thought I was just going to, like, dry brush it, or with a heavy hand, dry brush it, and it'd be okay, but it didn't look right. So, I end up just literally fully painting the candlesticks, like a full, real coat of paint over them, both of them. Just a solid coat of paint, that's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to take the colander and the little bowl, and I'm just going to try to distress them a little bit, make it look a little rusted, a little old. I am actually putting that on um, all the places that would typically rust if it was going to rust on its own, around the rim, around any of the hardware, um, the, the little feet that are on it. You know, just places that it would normally rust first on its own if it was going to just sit out, you know, if you just left it out and it sat and rusted. And then I just add a little here and there just for a little extra touch. But I'm just, I'm just popping that on with a uh, sponge brush, sponge paintbrush, and then kind of smearing it. Do the same thing to the inside. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this little pan also. Super simple. This turns out so stinking cute, too, and this was so easy to do. And you find stuff like this at thrift stores all the time. I see stuff like this all the time. Matter of fact, that little pan, I ended up getting three of those that day. She had three of those. Like I said, same thing for the little pan. I'm going to do the places that would rust first, like the hardware on it, the handles, the around the rim down the little seams in it. And this antique wax is just the best way that I know how to make it look that way. Now, there may be a professional way of, of uh, distressing metal, but for me, the antique wax works good, and I think it looks good in the end. That's just my personal preference. I just go all the way around it, just adding a little here and there, kind of add it thick and then smear it. And that's how it turns out. And Lord, mini pearl. I still got the darn tag on the bottom. <laughs> Do any of y'all remember mini pearl? Let me know in the comments. Leave that in the comments. Let me know if you remember mini pearl, if you know who that is. All right, so I took these candlesticks and my fingernail file. That is a diamond brand fingernail file I got from the Dollar Tree. That is what I had. That's my go-to when it comes to any kind of sanding to distress. That that thing works just as well as a piece of sandpaper, if not better. So, 
That's just my go-to whenever I, I distress something. Um, I just go over all the edges of this candlestick anywhere that would kind of, you know, it would pop, make it, make it uh, look really distressed. This turns out so cute, y'all. I can't wait for you to see it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so once I've got everything like I want it, I'm going to take my Loctite Super Grab or something like that it's called. Power Grab. That's what it's called. Add it to the bottom of one of these candlesticks, and then I'm going to stick the other candlestick to it. So I'm gluing the two candlesticks together first. One candlestick alone was just not tall enough. It wasn't the way I wanted it to look. So glue the two together, first thing. As soon as that's ready, you're going to glue the candlesticks to the bottom of this. Okay, so I did take the sticker off. <laughs> Mini pearl. Don't forget I said that. All right, so glue. I'm going to take my glue. Add a little dab of hot glue also. I love that Loctite glue too, y'all. That's what I use now. It doesn't smell like E6000 does. It doesn't have a smell at all to it. So I think it's great. So I just glued it directly in the middle of the center or, I, you know, eyeballing it about the center. Smear off any of the extra glue. And I do clean it up a little better than what you see there. And then glue all of that to the colander, the center of the colander. And this turns out so stinking cute. I just added some roses to the top and some succulents to the bottom of it. And I'm telling you, it's so cute. A little flower sack towel. Y'all are going to love it. Ah, look at that. So stinking cute. It's so different. Like, it's so perfect for the kitchen because of the colander. And then it's just, it's just different. And this is also a good size piece. I love this. Love it. I love tears anyway. So that one's perfect. All right. So for this next one, I got both of these items at the Dollar General store. That picture there actually ends up in another DIY that I did not finish. So y'all will have to see that in another one. But the little jug here, it's like a little milk jug-ish type thing. I gave $3.50 for that at the Dollar General store. Now, I'm just going to take my chalk paint and entirely cover this uh, jug with it. That picture that you saw, I love that dude. That one, you'll see that one in the, in the next couple videos, but I couldn't believe I found it. It matches those cups and those bowls that I'm so crazy about. So, yeah, y'all will end up seeing it. It will definitely be part of my kitchen. Anyway, so this little jug here, I just totally painted it with my chalk paint. And then I'm going to take my file and just go over it, distress it here and there. I, I focus mainly on the top and the neck of this because the bottom we're going to go around with some uh, rope. Thistle, thistle rope, I think is how you say it. So I just made a couple little spots, you know, just to distress it a little. And the fingernail file works so good. It is such a good little tool. And they have these all the time at the uh, Dollar Tree. Clean up my powder I got everywhere now. <laughs> well, all right. And then I wiped the jug off real good, too, with a, a baby wipe. All right. So, um, I'm just going to take my hot glue and start at the bottom with this rope. And we're just going to go all the way around it. Nothing hard about this. Totally simple. And you just took a $3.50 jug and turned it into like 20 bucks worth of home decor. If you bought this at a yard, at a, not a yard sale, but if you bought this at a boutique or like a farmhouse, um, like say Cracker Barrel or somewhere like that, you're going to give 18 to $20 for this. And you bought it for $3.50. I literally slapped some white paint on it scrubbed a little off, and then added some rope. 
That's all we're doing to this. So cute. Such an extra, like, perfect extra piece to this, this set that we're going, we got going on. And now I just added the hot glue around the bottom as I was doing it, the first two loops. And then the rest of it, I just kind of wrap, and then I would add a little glue, and then wrap and wrap, and then add a little glue. So about every two wraps or so, I would add just a little spot of hot glue just to hold it in place. So yeah, I just got kind of go around it a couple times, and then I'll add a little little strip of hot glue. This turns out so cute. And all I did was add some um, lamb's ear. That's all. That's the only uh, floral that I put in this. Just a couple picks of lamb's ear. And I got the lamb's ear from Walmart for like a dollar something a pick. And I went about halfway up the, the jug there with my rope. Or not halfway, about three-fourths of the way up. I just thought the rope kind of set it off. It just kind of made it a little extra farmhouse, if you want to say that. And they just keep cutting my pictures off. Well, ain't that something, huh? Now you can see it. Isn't it cute? So cute. All right, this next one. Now, y'all have seen me use these uh, pans before, but we're going to do something a little different with this one. I got this at the thrift store for $2, and then I've got this candlestick that I got from the Dollar, Dollar Tree. This little pan here, now, I was calling them a bunt pan whenever I used these before in one of my videos, and I did not know that they were a jello mold. That's what they actually are, or that's what I was told in the comments. So, this is a jello mold, not a bunt pan. Let me correct myself there. And thank y'all for telling me because I, I would rather be corrected than sound silly, okay? So anytime I say something wrong, y'all definitely let me know, all right? Okay, so I'm just going to take that. I glued it directly to the candlestick and now I'm fixing to go over it with my white paint. I, I paint it and the candlestick solid white. The... I didn't want to be redundant and use something that I'd already used before. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's got those silly bunt pans again or uh, jello mode. Sorry. Why, why is she doing this again? Well, because I did it a little different this time. Instead of making something to hang on the wall, we're actually making a candle holder out of this. So that's why. All right. So I'm going to take my um, antique wax and just slap it across it. Literally, just as fast as I could smack, smack, smack it across there. It just makes it look rusted is what it looks like in the end. And it's so cute. It really picks up that design that's already naturally on the um, mold itself. So when you're going across it with that paintbrush, it's really picking up that, that design and it stands out. And I just think it is so pretty. Very rustic, definitely farmhouse for sure. Just a little idea, something different to do with these. I think they're neat. They could go boho, they could go farmhouse. I mean, you could really use these in either or. And it's just something different to do with them. And I just hit it in different places all over, all over the mold, all over the uh, candlestick. Ain't that cute? I cut it off again. Well, there you can see it. Really cute. It's just different. I love it. All right, guys. So for this last one, this little uh, basket deal I got here, tray, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I got from... Um, Look, I held the Myers soap up for a minute there because I wanted to tell y'all, I don't have anything against the Myers soap. I just personally did not like it. So that's why we're going to use the Myers, the containers that the Myers soap came in. It wasn't that I have anything against them. Like I said, I just personally didn't like it. So I did never, I never used the lotion and the soap container I plan to reuse. I'm going to put something else in it. So <clears throat> anyways, this little tray here I got at Walmart. It was actually broken. One of the slats was uh, broke, 
like the nail had come out. So they, I, I bought it for, I think it was like $5 on sale. And I think I give like a dollar fifty for it because they marked it down even more because one of the slats was broke. And I just nailed the little slat back in, the little nail. So anyway, super cheap. So I just finished painting it solid white. I had started it in another DIY and never finished it. So that's why the bottom was what was lacking there. So I just finished painting it white and then I'm taking my black and I'm just going over it to give it that weathered look, mainly focusing on the edges of each slat. And then the sides, it, it just picks up that wood grain. As you're going across there with your brush, see how it just picks up the wood grain? That's pretty. All right. So <clears throat> once I get this totally painted the way I want it. We're going to work on the soap and lotion container. See, I love that. I think that looks neat. I like how it picks up that wood grain. All right, so back to the soap and the, the lotion container. I'm just going to peel these labels off, and you can use any soap and lotion or just the soap, whatever you want to do. But something that you can put some contact paper on because we're going to be using contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And like I said, I have nothing against the Myers. I just personally didn't like it. And the containers that it was in was perfect for this DIY. So that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm just taking this contact paper. I measured it off to fit the bottle, cut it down. I ended up cutting way, way too much off, but that's besides the point. Cut it down wrap it around my bottle, cut it down again, and then I'm going to I'm gonna measure it out a little bit better. It was still a little long, so I had to trim it some. But this turns out so cute, and it goes so good with what we got going on. Just the colors in it, the black and white just goes perfectly. Now I just need black and white curtains, guys. That's what I'm working on for next time. I want black and white. I want buffalo check curtains in my kitchen. Just a FYI. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So literally just take the backing off of this and stick it to the darn thing. You just stick it straight to the, the soap container or the lotion container, either one. Twist it around there and boom. Now, I did have to kind of play with it, maneuver it a little bit to get it on there exactly straight, where when you twisted it around to the other side, it match, matched up. But that's all I did to these. They turned out so cute, too. And it just goes so well with this stuff. I, I can't wait for you all to see the entire set together. Look at that. Now, is that not darling? Perfectly. It goes perfect. Love this. Now, that's going to be right by my kitchen sink. Will that not be cute? Ah, I love it. All right. And for the entire set, here you go. I love this stuff. Love it. The two-tiered tray is just uh, my absolute favorite. The little ladder is so stinking cute. It is different. I love the, the hand towels hanging on it. I just think it's perfect. And those little hand towels, I got those at the Dollar General store. A buck a piece, y'all. You can find so much stuff at the Dollar General. So cute. Love it. We got our signs. Somehow the bakery sign got cut off. I don't know why it does that. So there's another look at the bakery sign. Very special. I just love this stuff, y'all. So stinking cute. So cute. All right, guys, so that was the end of the video. I hope y'all enjoyed everything. I hope you will please give this video a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, please do so. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it so very much. I hope y'all will definitely stay tuned for the other episodes that I have coming up with this, and then the end will be, it'll be good. I promise. 
y'all have a blessed day and take care. We'll see you next time.